You're listening to Thursday Night Tailgate with Chris Mascaro and Bob Lazari, where NFL legends live on. Back to you, boys. It's him. He's a lot. And now back with us here on Thursday Night Tailgate is former running back Joe Burns. Let me remind you about Joe's background. He's from Thomasville, Georgia, which is in South Georgia, not far from the Florida line. Lettered in football and in track at Thomas County Central High School. He played running back, and over his junior and senior high school seasons, he combined for 4,547 yards and 56 touchdowns. Joe played his college ball at Georgia Tech, where he was an all-ACC running back. And when he left, he was the fourth-leading rusher in Georgia Tech history. He still remains eighth on that list, and he ranks fifth in career touchdowns with 31. He was an undrafted free agent signed by the Buffalo Bills in 2002, and he played with the Bills from 2002 to 2006. He's now the co-founder of Rising Seniors and Georgia Junior Bowl. In 2015, he was inducted into the Georgia Tech Hall of Fame, and we are honored he is back with us again tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Joe, Chris, and Bob, thanks for coming back on the show. Hey, Joe. How y'all doing? Thank y'all for having me. So, Joe, Joe, you know what? It's been a minute since we got to have you as part of the show, so catch us up. What's been going on with you? I'm just trying to stay uh, extremely productive, uh, working extremely hard with the foundation. Uh, we've been so fortunate on that end to help so many young men and to, you know, assist so many young men in making that transition to college. So luckily for us, since 2010, we assisted over 700 young men get an opportunity to go to college and play football. And since then, we probably had around 400 guys graduate college. We currently have currently over 30 guys currently in the NFL. So we've been really busy, uh, staying persistent and consistent, trying to help these young men reach their goals and dreams. But more importantly, I know they're way more than just football players. And that, and that's, you know, sort of the theme for the night, Joe. And we've had a couple of our other guests on tonight talking about those sorts of things. But talk about specifically what you're able to do and how you're able to help these young men get off and get into college and what the Rising Seniors does. Uh, what we do is, you know, I was fortunate enough, like my, my wife, she went to Georgia Tech with me also when I got three graduate degrees from Harvard. And I just, he used to go to class with her, and the learning experience was totally different than what I was accustomed to. So there, we all can be right or wrong. Like, we all just say our opinion. We learn from, they learn from each other. But traditionally, we go to college professor by instead of there right on the board for an hour and don't even look back to engage. So we wanted to make the process very engaging, get them interactive. So the whole curriculum is just basically not just talking with them, but getting them engaged and sharing with them. You know, we get them to learn themselves and what they like. So we focus on uh, their careers outside of sports, focus on financial literacy, uh, mental health, uh, you know, philanthropy. You know, we just try to focus on everything that can help these young men, give them the tools to go on and continue to be successful once they play their last game. Joe, I want to switch gears a little bit. I want to get your thoughts on your alma mater, Georgia Tech. Looking back at last season, they finished uh, seven and six. And you look at this season, they they get the unfortunate luck of having to open up at Clemson. So, what's your expectation uh, for Georgia Tech this year? I'm extremely excited about you know what we're going to do at Georgia Tech moving forward. Uh, Coach Johnson, and I think he you know laid a foundation there. But you know, I think Coach Collins is the right person to come in and get the fan base back energized, get recruits back in. You know, I'm really excited about the opportunity to, to open up against Clemson because we get to show our fans the new Georgia Tech and, you know, what the new era is going to look like. It's going to be a different kind of football. But more importantly, you got coaches that, you know, that play there. Coach Collins was the GA when I first got to Georgia Tech. And we've been friends, you know, throughout, you know, all this time. We always stay in contact, you know, always, you know, checked on each other. So, to have him back is really exciting. Now we're getting all the former players coming back. Like five of the guys on the coaching staff play at Georgia Tech. So we're getting that culture back. So I'm really excited, you know, to see how we go out and uh, upset Clemson, you know, over the first game of the season. I have questions for Joe. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to speak with you, Joe. And <clears throat> I always love talking to guys that played up here in the Northeast because I could pick their brain about the weather, especially somebody like you, Joe, that was from the South, Georgia late college and high school in Georgia, and then you find yourself spending a pro career in Buffalo. Joe, give our listeners 
an idea of uh, how the weather can get up there. The whole thing with lake effect snow, it must have been something. <laughs> it, it it was, you know, it, it was something that really caught me off guard. I remember our first rookie mini camp, you know, in Georgia, it was like 100 degrees. So I go to Buffalo with not a jacket, just regular clothes, and it was snowing. Like, I was like, this is crazy. Like, what is this really going to be? Like, this is what, like, late April, early May? But uh, it, it's something that, you know, it takes getting used to. I, you know, I, I, I tell the story. I was just in Buffalo probably two weeks ago. Uh, we actually went out there to the football camp. But uh, I was telling, uh, you know, it was over there for about the first snowstorm I experienced. I drove out to the stadium and told the security guy, don't pay me no attention. I went out there. That's how I learned how to drive in the snow. I was doing donuts. I not going to hit anything. So I went out there and just enjoyed myself in that big, big old parking lot, trying to learn how to drive in the snow. But it's definitely something different. But what I've learned is for the high school players in Buffalo, I never thought about it until recently. It really affects them way more than guys out here in Georgia because because of the weather. After their their season, the teams can't get and work with them until pretty much summer. So your athletes and everywhere else, the weather don't prevent that. So those athletes are so far behind because of the weather, they can't get that extra work that guys in the South are getting. So they're kind of behind. So, you know, that's just something I never thought about. You know, I saw it myself in Buffalo playing in the weather, but not thinking about how it can affect kids with dreams and aspirations of going to college and when they make it to the NFL. Joe, I look back on uh, your rookie year, 2002, and some of the members of that Buffalo team, it was only a 500 team, but the, the offensive players on that team were very special. You had guys like Travis Henry and George Bledsoe, of course, and the veterans, Larry Centers and Peerless Price, Molds. I mean, this was an incredibly talented bunch of guys. Take, uh, take me back to the practices and what they were like and to be around guys that uh, were so offensively gifted. Uh, it, it was amazing. The practice was tremendous. Like, our offense was loaded, but on the other side of the ball, you had Pat Williams at D-Tackle, Sam Adams at Aaron Schobel. Linebackers mm-hmm. were Takeo Spike, London Fletcher, Jeff Posey. You had Lawyer Malloy at safety. You had, you know, Antoine Whitfield, uh, uh, Nate Clements. You know, so it was just like, it was a, an amazing experience because, you know, it was the practice so competitive because we were going at each other. You know, and I, and I really felt like if we had to get Coach Williams another year, he would have turned it around because he, he had it booming. Like, even though we, we finished, I think, 8-8, eight and eight, but I think we were way better than that. And just one more year, I think he would have really reaped the, the fruits of his labor. But, you know, guys like Drew Bledsoe and, you know, guys pushing you like Travis Henry, like, that guy was an animal. You know, like that guy, you know, he ran so hard, played hard. Yeah, Eric Bowles, the Phillies price, them two just dominated because, you know, you can't pick your poison. Both don't hurt you. And, you know, the offensive line with guys like Trey T, you know, uh, Ruben Brown, like it was just so much talent all the way around. I just felt like, you know, if they gave Coach Williams one more year, you know, we could have done a lot back then, you know, with, with the team he put together. And Joe, you were an undrafted free agent. Uh, I obviously go up there to Buffalo. I just was curious, why Buffalo? Uh, honestly, uh, you know, it was a couple opportunities, but I went to Buffalo only because I had teammates from college up there. That's the only decision I made. I actually turned down, you know, teams that would offer that offered me way more money than Buffalo, but I just went there because I, I knew somebody there. That's the only reason I chose Buffalo. When I look back through your uh, your games and, and all the stats that you had, you, one touchdown in the NFL, 2005 on a 19-yard pass from Kelly Holcomb in a game against Denver. That uh, highlight yeah. open in the den all the time, so when the fellows come over, they can see that one? <laughs> you, you, you know, the, the crazy thing about, you know, playing in the NFL, I learned this early. You know, you, you either are offensive starter, defensive starter, or special team starter, right? And my my pride and joy is like being a leader on our special teams where we was number one in the NFL three years in a row. Like that, you know, that was so much fun. Like just, you know, we had Coach Danny Smith and then we finished with our Coach Coach April. But, you know, we're flying around like, you know, I tell people today, like I used to set the wedge. You know, it's a little bit of old me with the linemen. So that's how tough 
you know, I was that I just wanted to be a part of it. So we, you know, special teams, I, you know, I got my stick. Uh, the person who had the best, best most, uh, it's like the one, the, the most tackles or whatever it was for the special team, they put your name, their number on a stick and the person that had their number on there the most. So that stick I have is one of my, my prized possessions. So, and we had some great players, uh, Corey Wire, uh, Angelo Crowell, you know, guys that really, you know, that was my first time really playing defense. So it really, you know, making tackles. So just adapting to that and, just the energy we, we play with on our special teams were really excited for. So you, you you said a moment ago how excited you are for for Georgia Tech and their upcoming season and you know probably out into the future. Give us your thoughts on the Bills. What, what are you seeing from the Bills? And is this a team? You know, head coach Sean McDermott. They uh, they struggled a little bit last season after making the uh, playoffs for the first time in a long time the season before last. But are you excited about what you're seeing from him and Josh Allen? And the Bills uh, heading into the 19 season. I'm really excited about it, but and more importantly, I'm excited about what they're putting together. So, if former players go up there now, it doesn't even look like the same place. So they're putting money into it. They're, you know, like they're giving the players everything they need. So I'm really excited to see just that transition that they use from. You know, a lot of times, like we felt like, you know, we were like the step step uh, brothers or step family of the NFL up in Buffalo, but they're really changing it around. But, you know, the, the team they have together is tremendous. Like, you know, I'm excited to see those guys come out and make the playoff again and make a deep run because they have everything they need. And, Joe, the, the Buffalo fans are as probably as loyal a fan base as there is in, in sports, period. And you got the Bills Mafia and, the, and all the folks that show up, you know, whether regardless of what the the weather is like. Talk about the relationship with the fans that you saw while you've been up there. Uh, the fans in Buffalo were, were made it, you know, a, uh, an amazing experience, an amazing place to be because, you know, those guys, they, they work hard, you know, to, to purchase those tickets. They go out and work hard that week. So we felt like we wanted to go out and just hey, thank them for coming to watch us play. So that was kind of like our chip on our shoulders. Like, you know, we want to do this for our fans. Because, like, you know, no matter where they saw you, they always came or everybody was always nice, you know, always super supportive, you know. And that's, you know, you don't find that in most organizations because, you know, people jump off the bandwagon fast. But for the history and how long it's been since, you know, Buffalo had the success they had in the past, but the fans always stay loyal. They they stick there. They don't jump off the boat. And that's something that, you know, that speaks volumes because, you know, it's not like that in so many different places. So I, the fans really will make Buffalo such a special place. Joe, before we let you go, remind our listeners again about the great things you're doing with rising seniors and how they can stay up to date with that, get more involved and get more information, and then ultimately, obviously, follow you online and on social media. All right, awesome. Uh, definitely, you can, uh, our website for rising seniors is uh, www.risingseniors.org. And you can follow us on Twitter at, at Rising Seniors. And, you know, we have a lot of our stuff on Twitter on our website. But, you know, definitely, you know, follow us, keep up with what we're doing. And, you know, any support is always uh, gratefully appreciated. Well, Joe, it's been a, a, a huge privilege having you back on the show with us again tonight. Love your enthusiasm and the great things that you're doing. We hope you'll come back and join us again real soon. All right. Thank you all for having me. Y'all have a great night. Take care, Joe. Take care, Joe. Bob, I love I love the enthusiasm in Joe's voice. You know, I mean, now we try to focus as much as we can on the positive here on this show. But you listen to him and how positive he is and how excited he is about Georgia Tech football this season and in the future. How excited he was to be a part of the uh, the Buffalo Bills, and then obviously the excitement around the great things he's doing now with rising seniors. Boy, that's just I love to hear that. That's that's one of the highlights of the show is hearing somebody who's fired up as Joe is. A great point, Chris, and <clears throat> this was a guy who was out of football at a very, very young age, and I'm sure it was a very tough transition, but he has a great attitude, and he's really uh, he's really structured his life around what he's doing now, and, and put, oh, he's putting a lot of positive into uh, what he might not have had on the field. He's going into other things now, and uh, so he's uh, got a ton of questions. We'll get him back on. Yeah, absolutely. we got to get Joe back on the show again soon. All right, we've got our next guest, Gus Farad, hanging on the line. Going to get to Gus on the other side of this real quick station break. 